Hi, I'm Janie Donaldson. And I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm David Martelli. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting in everyday living. Enjoy the show. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Genomi America. Genomi, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation. We care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines. A1. Precision Quilting Machines. OFA. The original rotary cutting system. Sulky of America. Makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson, Cindy Walter, and David Martelli. You're seeing some of the most colorful, wonderful, spectacular quilts by Robbie Ecklow, and she's here today to show us what she does with Procyon dyes. Hi, Hi Robbie. Jamie. Um, we're going to be pouring this Procyon dye down this fiber, dying down the fabric, and it'll look like a river. Like a river. Of color. That's yeah. kind of your trademark. Right? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. We've seen you do quite a few fabrics, but they still have that streaked Look. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like watercolor mm -hmm. on the thing. So um, this is the Procyon dye. It's fiber reactive and it'll work on any natural fiber. That usually comes like a powder, doesn't it? That's right. And I use uh, one tablespoon in one cup of water. That's my recipe. Other people use different amounts. And I put it in a squirty bottle. Okay. And we've already taken the fabric and soaked this in about three gallons of water and a cup of soda ash. We have to raise the pH of the water, make it make it soapy okay. for the uh, chemical reaction to take place. So that the dye really bites in. Right, it's in there and it's attached permanently to the molecules of the cotton. Okay, one thing I've noticed about your fabrics is the color is bright all the way through. Right, because it's a dye, so it goes through the fabric. Okay. And I'm using a lot more powder than, some people will use smaller amounts and measure it out. I just kind of overkill okay. on the powder to make sure there's a lot. So I'm going to start with some orange. Okay, let's see. I'll stand over here a little so I can... Okay, and the first thing I do... Now, when I do this at home, I dye six yard, or four yards at a time. It's six feet high and I have to stand on a ladder. This is more convenient. And if you don't have a pole that you can... I hang this up in my basement. And if you don't have a pole in your basement that you can hang things from, you could put two tables next to each other. Uh-huh. And put a... Uh, broomstick across them. We're using a clothing rack. You could do that. So All you have to do is suspend it somehow. You're really pouring it on. I, yeah. Oh. Well, we have a little basin at the bottom, but what do you use at home? It, well, at home I uh, use a toboggan. Oh. <laughs> I buy them at the grocery store in the off season for about five dollars each. That's a good idea. It all runs and then you can throw fabric in the, uh, in the bottom. That is beautiful. Okay, that's enough orange. Now, the fun part is that the colors mix together in the fabric, uh -huh. and you get different shades. These are single color dyes. The, it's a molecule made to make yellow, yes. and it's a molecule made to make orange. This, is, this orange is not a mixture of yellow and red. It's just a molecule that makes orange. So the fabric sold out. You see how there's Yeah, they're mixing and they get another color. Have you learned that there's certain things that work out better 
than other colors or have you gotten to where you have a favorite color combination? Well, the first thing that I do is avoid using two colors that contain, you know, if you mix all three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, you'll get brown. Uh -huh. So when I mix the colors, for example, I put orange on first, I wouldn't have put purple next to the orange. Okay. Because then you'd have I'm yellow and red and purple and purple is blue and red, so you'd get brown. Where they meet. But sometimes you might want the brown. Yes. Yeah, but it, I want this to be bright. So I started with the orange because it's a nice bright color. It'll give it life. And then the yellow looks good with the uh, And this is wet, so orange. I see like here it's streaking and, it's, and it bleeds down and makes a beautiful marbled look. But if it's not wet enough, can you add water? Yeah, or if it's not going all the way down to the bottom. This is actually working out pretty nicely. So I'll make these stripes and then. Uh, I'll go around to the back and pour some from the back because n not, the dye might not have gotten all the way on if the fabric If it's wet enough, back. it might stick together, but... Yeah, but it doesn't always, so I'll just go out and back. Although there's nothing saying, really, you have to have the fabric hanging down the back. You could just close pin it, maybe. And you'll have a little pull mark on the top, but that's of interest, too, especially if it's your, you take that and use it for something. Yeah, I have people who specifically like to buy the pull mark. Oh. It kind of gives the batik. Yeah, it's got Perfect. a little bit different look, and they're one of a kind. Yeah, so let's pour some. See how pretty that is oh, right in the middle? It is beautiful. Oh. And you can just. Now, how long does it keep changing is, until it dries, or does it kind of set up pretty soon? Um, well, normally what I do is I do a whole bunch of it, and then I leave. The, I do this in my basement, uh -huh. and then I come back the next day and start washing everything. And... It dries, and the, the dye will keep getting deeper and deeper as long as there's a little bit of heat in there and it's wet. I so love it. On hot summer days, um, <clears throat> I'll coil this up and throw it in a plastic bag uh -huh. and put that out on the driveway, yes. and you get darker colors. Um, another thing that you could do is uh, you can mix various uh, values of one color, like take this and make it weaker and weaker, you know, split uh -huh. it out and add more water. Right. Make it weaker and weaker. So you can have soft pastels and they'll still coordinate. Kind yeah, of. yeah, and they'll go with wow, each other. Wow, I want to try it. It looks so much fun. Okay, do you want to do the blue? Sure, how much blue do I put in? As much as you want. Okay, let's, let's Just go Just squirt it. it on there. Okay, more than that. More. You have to really, a healthy amount. And then go over here. Now, if you have white spots, um, I just figured this out a couple weeks. I'll just take a foam brush and paint in the white spots with uh, a light color. Uh-huh. Okay, now don't put too much blue because see how it's getting kind of solid? But to go come over here and do this. Okay. This part here. And then also so you have to pay very careful attention sometimes to the um, selvages because they're hard to get covered. So if that's important to you. And then there's sometimes is the soup at the bottom when I use a lot of water. Now I'm gonna pour some water down this side. Okay. Um, and then and you get soup collecting like by the end of the day when I've done a lot uh -huh. and I'll throw fabric in there and to collect the dye. Don't waste any. Yeah, and it makes a nice um, neutral. Let's see if that'll make the dye run down. See how it, oh. you can watch it run down. It really blends then. Yeah. And oh, beautiful. How Except fun. for it'll be lighter there now where I did it. But, oh, you know, this could use it. So. Oh, thanks for yeah. showing me this. Let's try to get the rest of it done today, too, okay? Okay. Right, thank you. Here, add some yes. yellow. Oh, yeah, do that. Do a blue one up here. Hi, I would love to introduce a special guest here at Quill Central today. And uh, today we have with us Miss Marinda Stewart. Hi, nice to have you. Hi, Dave. Pleasure. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I am a man's man and sometimes a lady's man uh, when I try to be. It doesn't always work out that way. But it's all about the tools. And mm -hmm. I understand you have some tools to show us today. An iron is Well, some this of the is a tool that most men aren't familiar with. It's called an iron. <laughs> Not all of us <laughs> men, but. I didn't say all, I said most. <laughs> and basically we're going to be doing angel wings today. Wow. Um, that always ends up being a problem. 
you know, once you do an angel or a fairy is how you're going to get the wings and keep them transparent and flexible and all of those things. It's really very simple. So what you're going to start out with is the material of your choice. I have some tulle here with some gold dots on it. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've put it on top of some fusible web following the manufacturer's directions. Okay. Now in this case you do need to use a nonstick press sheet because the tool is very open weave and the glue does bleed through. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what's on the, uh, the inside of that sheet that, that holds it together? This is a nonstick pressing sheet okay. like a nonstick pan. Okay. Um, so it's that same kind of technology that allows things to uh, be pressed. It started out um, in the cooking industry, actually, and it was used for baking. Wow. So that you didn't have to re-grease the pan all the time. And it just comes right out just like that? And so now that we've pressed this, we're going to peel. If I press this long enough. Yeah, we're going to peel wow. the paper backing off. And you can see why you want to leave this on a pressing sheet. And it just peels right off there, huh? And it just peels right off. Wow, that's cool. Basically what it is, it's a layer of glue attached to paper. Okay. So at this point, if you don't want to do anything else, what I do is I just take some lightweight wire and lay it in there. If you want to add extra embellishment at this point, you can take something like this wonderful iridescent organza and just put little snippets in here. Arrange them however you want. And you can use the same sheet to keep pressing over continually. Absolutely. Over mm -hmm. yeah, man, that's really, really neat. So I'm going to pull this up now off the sheet and put it on top of this. And the wire's in there for what purpose? What the purpose wire's in serve? there to uh, allow you to shape the wing. Oh, so you can put it in any it. position you want mm -hmm. to. Well, that's yep. really neat. Then, again, I'm not pressing this as long as we probably should have following the manufacturer's directions, but we're, okay. it's to give you a general idea. Seems easy enough, though. Very yeah. simple. Yeah, it is. Which makes it nice. So we peel it back, and then we can lift this up. And then you have, and then what I do is I'll come in with a scissor and shape this in any, any way I want. Wow. Looks easy enough. I, th I think I could even do that. I think you probably could. Very, very simple. Doesn't take a great deal of intelligence. Good. Then so, I fit right into that category. So, that so you, can, you can bend and shape it in That's any good. way that you want. Fantastic. And there's some other ways that you can do this, some other methods of making wings. One of the things that you can do is you can use just a piece of organza. Mm -hmm. You can put your wire in it for a wing. And then you can use something called an iron-on vinyl. And it wow. comes paper-backed. And then what you do is you put the vinyl down and you use the paper as your press cloth. And always using the same sheet. Wow, that's neat. So, and then you do that. And what happens when you pull this off is the vinyl is now attached to the organza. The wire is in it. You have a shiny finish on your wing. And again, you can cut it out in any shape you want. So you're not limited in, on, on some nope. of the material that you can use. Absolutely. That's, that's really Another neat. thing you can do, which is great fun, there is a wonderful new um, product out that is fusible fibers. And this requires tissue paper. Mm -hmm. And these are just iron-on fibers. You can see that they're... Wow, multicolor? These happen to be opalescent, yeah, and they come in a variety of colors, but they're just, they're just fibers with nothing. So we can see how you use this. Um, if you would, real quick, could you show us the, the doll that you made or just po uh, show us some pointers? Well, I, used, I did the wings the same way that we talked about, and uh, I wanted them in a pink tone to match the doll. And, you know, just did them and then attached them to the doll. Well, as I can Very say, simple. this is absolutely <coughs> gorgeous. It's easy. It's fun. Um, if you don't mind, thank you for your time so much. And, uh, Appreciate it. We're going to take us away to, and watch a quick clip of 13 Moons Gallery and uh, see some quilts. Thank you. The high desert city of Santa Fe, New Mexico is among the top five art markets in the United States, boasting over 300 galleries. At the forefront of exploring the art of craft is one venue that showcases a variety of fiber arts, including quilting. Thirteen Moons Gallery was founded by Mary Ann Holzer and her desire to establish a quilt gallery, an art quilt gallery, as opposed to traditional quilts. And she wanted to bring the same status and prestige to quilts as paintings, bronze sculpture, and so forth had. So she felt that the place to do this was Santa Fe, New Mexico. We have currently two um, quilt shows, one being the work of Wendy Hewn, the other being the work of Jane Kenyon. Wendy Hewn, from the time she was a child, 
made her own paper dolls, cut and pasted, and made things out of books and magazines. The curtains are made out of sort of uh, scraps of 50s materials. She has a great sense of humor. Jane Kenyon's imagery really comes from her experiences, really comes from her mind, and she sews multiple layers together. And some of the layering is not sewn down, which makes it puff up. And the whole surface vision that you see is created from the colors of the layers. There are multiple colors. And from the sewing and the high-low, um, she plays on that. And it's almost like bas-relief and the way she uh, creates the surface. Thirteen Moons is a great gallery. Um, it's, it's the only one in Santa Fe that is totally towards textiles, and we're very excited that they're here. I feel that our quilt movement is very exciting. We have so many new people coming from um, either jumping right into it or coming from a painterly background and enjoying the textiles and the fabrics and the manipulation that can be done with fabric as opposed to paint or weaving. We have professionals that are writing books and, and getting on programs and being shown in, in fine art galleries. And it's, it's an exciting movement. It's a wonderful um, medium to work in. We feel like we've found our success as a gallery because we fit a particular niche that many other galleries just don't fit. That people come in and they really respond to the textiles and the softness. And sometimes they don't know why they respond to um, the materials in here. But we all handle materials in our daily lives all the time. Today we have with us Kathy Franks, designer. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks, Janie. I'm so glad to be back. But I have a new name now. My oh. husband gave it to me. Yes. I am the Quiltinator. The Quiltinator. The <laughs> yes. What have you brought with you today? Well, today, Janie, I want to show you some of the painting techniques that I do. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to paint. No one way is the right way, but I'm going to show you my way today. Okay, well, we've never really been able to narrow you down either. You have so many techniques. Well, thank you, and I'm always changing the techniques that I do, so you never will be able to narrow me down. That's <laughs> my way of doing things. But I want to show you today the different techniques that I do, in particular, the quilt that we have here in front. And the quilt that's next to it, or the quilt that's next to it, will show you the different painting techniques okay. that I do to do that. Let's get started. Okay, today we're doing cotton, but you don't have to just paint on cotton. No. You can paint on anything. I have some samples here. Oh, let's this see. is inexpensive velour or velvet painted. This was white. Oh. Before I got started with it. To stabilize it, I just put an iron-on cotton stabilizer on the back. The colors are absolutely oh, the little sheen you get vivid. On there just makes it is wonderful. absolutely wonderful. This is one of the fabrics that in, that is in my little girl quilt mm -hmm. that you're going to see. This is in the leaves. And this lime color is so oh, it's now. fabulous. And then you can just do chiffon. Oh, the scarves we could do, and you've stamped this. Or I've something. stamped that, and it's absolutely design. wonderful. And then I like to play with things. I even painted oh, a Kathy. quilt sack. This is even plastic and you painted the whole thing. It went over the plastic. This was just painted on, but the back shows what it looks like if you just scrunch it up and let and it dry. Stamp it. And then you open this up and you mm -hmm. can launder this and everything? Launder it, ah. yeah, press it with a hot iron or after five to seven days it cures all on its own. But read the label on the back of the paint because it will tell you what this to do. This must be mine, it's pink. It's pink. It's for you, Janie. You just keep that. The first thing that I do is I staple my fabric to a frame. You don't have to go out and get expensive frames. You can even use old picture frames. And this is an old picture frame. And because I'm going to be taking this fabric off pretty quickly, I don't keep it on there a long time. Okay. You can use thumbtacks or bigger staples, but I just use staples like this. Regular staples. They're regular not all staples. The way in, but they're just enough to no, hold it. No, just enough to hold it. And what you're going to do is you're going to stretch the fabric like I have here. I do the long sides first, then the edges, and let me show you how easy this is to do. 
Just hold it, tap it, hold it, tap it, and you're okay. done. This is stretched. Good. You can still get something under there to pry that out so easy. Very easily. The next thing I'm going to do is to get the diffusion of the colors that I have here, I'm going to wet my fabric. Okay. And that is just with a brush. Just brush your, brush your water across like so. It's really fabulous, the effects that this has. Oh, I'm excited to see how that all flows out. It all flows out beautifully. Then you pick the colors that you want. Now that one looks like it has a lot of glitter in it. It has a lot of glitter, a lot of gold on it. And oh. you just run it across here. How heavy you put the paint on is how deep your color will wind up being. And you just rub this on oh, in any direction that you want to. This will dry very dark. Okay. That's exactly what I want. Once I have all my paint on here that I want, I will then take rock salt. Regular and, street salt? Well, this is the stuff that you put on your sidewalks. But that comes uh, in small, a big bag. medium, big. Right, you can buy any size bag you want. And you sprinkle the salt over the top of it, as heavy as you wish, because wherever the salt goes, you're going to get these little circles that are in this quilt up okay. here, and it makes all the paint, the paint run, pulls. pull together. And then you can spritz the salt with water, and I'm just going to place some water over here, and you can see how it's starting to react. So you can get a lighter area just by putting a little more water there. Correct. And then what I like to do is I like to put my canvas up on blocks or on cups. But let me tell you what happened one day, Janie. I left the house and the paint pixies came oh, you in. Oh, paint pixies I have paint house. pixies that live at my house and they knocked it off. the supports over on one side and it went up like this. And the paint dried in drips going oh. in this direction. It's in the petals of the flower of the quilt oh, behind me with so the little girl you just in it. Used it. So mistakes are very good. Uh -huh. You don't know what you're going to get when you get those. So just run these any way you want to. You can also take this fabric off and fold it so that the paint runs to the center and then lay it back down. And you're going to get all different kinds of wonderful effects. From, from the salt and from the Do you ever use paint. any tools or anything? Yes. You go to the store, especially the kitchen store, and you get little things like this. What is that, like a scrubby? It's a scrub brush. Uh -huh. A whisk broom works fabulously. I mean, anything that you can put paint onto, go and get it. And what you do is you dip the paint in the color and watch, this is absolute magic, Janie. This is absolutely wonderful. How heavy you stamp the fabric is the kind of design that you're going to get. So let me do this one heavy, and you're get, going to get more of a solid circle. But watch if I just take this, lightly touch it, and just whirl. Oh. Look at how wonderful that is. And that you can is, do, and oh, one side is dark, one is light. One is shaded. light, keep, keep doing this. So you can create quite a bit. So you can do the whole background of a piece of fabric with that. Oh, that's wonderful. This little tool I found is fabulous to stamp these stamps with. And you just put paint all over the stamp. You can blot this off onto another piece of fabric, but I really like the look of just stamping this down and picking it oh, up. That's I wonderful. like that look of getting more faded as we go around. I think this is a fabulous look Fast that you can and do. And look at what I discovered just the other day. If I want to, I can lightly come through here and stamp the background oh, of this. Beautiful. And look at how wonderful it is when you get another a color, shadow. a little shadowing in there. It's absolutely Very fabulous to do it that yes. way. I have a little scarf here of velvet that what I did that this, with. Kathy? And this will show you the beginning down here is just the leaves. Here I've added a little more stamping. And here and I've overdone. You can keep going and oh. going. It's like a little Energizer bunny. You just keep going and going and going. Oh, that is so much fun. Thank you so much, Kathy. You're welcome. Yeah.
quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Janome America, Janome, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation, we care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines, A1, Precision Quilting Machines. OFA, the original rotary cutting system. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. We are celebrating quilting in everyday living by offering you the new educational beginner kits. You may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or visit www.quiltcentraltv.com.